Good morning. Good morning. Good morning and welcome. Happy Monday. <laughs> Yay, Monday. I like Mondays. Yeah, Monday's as good as me. I get to sleep in. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, was... Although I work later, but I get to sleep in. <laughs> I get to stay up until tomorrow, but uh, Monday. Monday's okay. Uh, I, you know what? Experience every day. Get the most out of every day, even Mondays. Um, Mondays give you a shot to do what you didn't do last week. Mondays give you a chance to improve on what you didn't do last time. Um, it was Father's Day yesterday. Happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. And I gotta tell you, my Father's Day was awesome. Awesome. Fantastic. Gotta tell you, good day. Really, really good day. Thank you. You're welcome. I really appreciate it greatly. Um, so, um, we're going to talk about fathers today because in the current culture, in the cur current dynamic, um, frankly, fathers have been sort of pushed to the side and the whole father, fatherhood thing is sort of turned into being a progenitor, a sperm donator, um, a baby daddy sort of um, position. And I think that we've seen an incredible amount of damage from it. Now, before we get started, I want to make sure that people know that what, 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 what I'm not doing today, what we're not doing today, we're not trying to shame anybody who is, who, who's a single mother. We're not trying to shame anybody who is in a situation where you're the only parent and there is no man in the house. We're not trying to shame... You gotta do in, what you gotta do. And, you, and people do. And people do, and that's awesome. Um, because it's hard. It's t it, it, we know it's tough. And a lot of people do a really good job um, of raising their kids, raising their kids singly in, in the right on way. Their own. But you know what? I, I, my position is, and I think David's position is that although people do it, it's not really what God's best is. Yes. It's not the best situation. And I think that we've and we have, uh, as a society, suffered for, suffered from it. Mm -hmm. Again, not blaming anybody, not trying to shame anybody or fault anybody. For the decisions that, that that got made or got made for you, and well, you know, in, in situation, you know, pe you, you know people get divorced, people die, um, people end up not marrying the father of their children for all sorts of reasons, and sometimes for very good, sometimes for very good reasons. Uh, I we, I get that. So again, I'm not trying to shame anybody or fault anybody or make anybody angry on purpose. We're just trying to develop or talk about. What's really the best situations? Uh, and I'd like to start off with um, a couple of statistics. You know, with the increasing number of, premar uh, of premarital births and a continuing high divorce rate, the proportion of children living with just one parent uh, rose from 9.1% in 1960 when I was born. Yes, there was no internet when I was born. Um, to 20.7% just six years ago, in 2012. In 2012. That's an ama that's an amazing percentage. Now, and in uh, currently, in black fam black children, more than half of black children live in single parent homes. Fifty five percent live in single family homes. Thirty three percent, or 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 thirty one percent, oh, sorry, almost a third of Hispanic children live in single family homes. While about a fifth or 20.7 percent of uh, white children live in single-family homes. Now, we've all seen the statistics and heard the statistics about how kids, especially young boys, who grow up in fathers uh, fatherlessness house houses or homes tend to get in tr tend to get in more trouble. They, they tend to get in more trouble. They tend to have more trouble at school. They tend to have more trouble with behavior. They tend to have more trouble with uh, respecting authority. They tend to have more trouble. Girls who grow up in houses without oh, good fathers tend to have more trouble. And, 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 and again, I want to say, this. I'm saying tend, listen to all the words. Because I'm... Not all of them. Because I am... <laughs> I'm speaking faster <laughs> than you're listening. <laughs> one of 
of our YouTubers said that uh, yes, last time in the video. Did. I thought it was funny. Um, so we're talking about ten to. This isn't every situation. So everybody has their own personal situation. So don't don't yell at us about. Well, you know what? I, my kids don't get no. I know. I know. Thank you. Thank you for not letting your children run wild. But um, but we see that even girls tend to have trouble. Um, they have trouble in their um, in keeping relationships. In their relationships, they do. Mm -hmm. Um, they don't have an idea of how they should be treated because their father wasn't there to show them how a woman should be treated and how they should be loved and not not abused and all these different things that a father can show you um, how you should be loved. And part of the father's responsibility is to show their children um, through how they treat their mother how to treat their wives or how how they're to be treated by their husbands or future husbands that's part of that's that's part of why good fathers have to be in the home and and that's tough to do if you've got a an absent father situation because I want to talk about that too because people mm -hmm. a lot of people who are who are co-parenting um, have an absent father situation where dad you know mom and dad don't live together um, but they're parenting. Their but, they, but they are parenting. Their, they're 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 parenting their children. Um, it's the everyday consistency that I think kids see. Mm -hmm. And I got to talk about consistency at church last night. And the deal is, whatever you whatever you do, that's what you're practicing. And whatever you practice, that's what's being made perfect, being made permanent. The you know when people use the phrase "practice makes perfect." No, it doesn't. Practice makes permanent. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do, that's what they see, and that's what they'll know. So if they see, and you know, so if kids see an absent father situation, now I, again, I know people are doing the best they can, but if they see an absent father situation where dad, is, they see dad on the weekend, or they see dad every once in a while, um, then that's what they that, that's what they think is is normal, mm -hmm. and think it's okay for them. But there are gaps because of time. You can't be there all the time. You can't be there to to let your kids see how you treat your wife or your uh, or your girlfriend or whomever. Significant other. Well, how, whatever mm -hmm. phrases they use nowadays. You know, significant. significant other. <laughs> Is that what y'all say now? Is that what y'all young people say now? Uh, I don't. I don't know. But um, so that so you got to be so so the idea is. That in, in in order for it to be the best situation, and we're only going to talk about best situations, um, and not everybody gets to live in the best situation. Uh, in order for um, to be the best situation, uh, somebody's got to be there all the time. You got to be there all the time. You got to be there at bedtime. You got to be there at bath time. You got to be there to do do homework. You got to be there uh, when th when other things in the household are are, are not going well. Um, so they can so kids can see, especially young boys, to see how you react to when things are, when they're stressed, when things are not going well. How do, how do you react? So many, and I, and I saw this when I was teaching, so many young boys are hyper-emotional. When things don't go well, they act out they in out. really high, hyper-emotional ways. They, like women. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. Because, <laughs> yeah. Because women tend to do that. Not all women, but we tend to 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 get hyper and you know get all emotional and and stressed out and anxiety and stuff like that. Whereas men tend to not do that as much. But if a boy, if a young man is around only women, if his mom, his grandma, his aunties, and all of them are raising him, he tends to carry on the traits of what they do. Yes. And that's, Not all the time. Oh, well, everybody, you know, because I know everybody's like, I can't, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Not everybody. all the time, because sometimes moms can know how to have father figures in the lives of their men, young men. If they, if they're a single mom, say they're a widow or what, you know, whatever the situation that caused them to be outside of uh, um, uh, having the father there. A lot of mothers are wise enough to keep their kid, their young men in church. They keep them, you know, in uh, mentoring programs, you know, boys and girls club and all that stuff that 
can help them get that male figure in their life, you know, so that they can develop because a lot of moms are out there doing it well, doing it very well. So we're not saying everybody, just because you're single and you, 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 you're doing it doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. No, we're not saying that you're screwing, I'm not saying we're not, we're not saying you're screwing up your kid, we're not saying that at all. We're just looking at what's the best situation. The best situation. And the best situation is for both parents to be and to have in a the good home. have a good father and a good mother in the house. Um, and I think because of consistency, kids need to see the same thing again and again to get it. Because a lot of us don't get it the first, you know when we see stuff or hear stuff the first time. We don't get it the first time. We need to see it again and again because um, that's what they're going to that's what they're going to gravitate gravitate to. And that's what they're going to look to when, when they get in that situation. They're going to fall back on what they know. Mm -hmm. What they've seen goes on in their household is what you tend to gravitate to doing in your life situations. This is, this is how my mommy and daddy used to, used to do it. And we see that in abusive household we and I, and I and I know that and I'm confident about that because in abusive relationships we often see the abuser I mean the the, the child in an abusive relationship the the, 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 the son become an abuser mm -hmm. and we often see the woman who's in an abusive relationship come from an abusive uh, family so she thinks that's the way she's she thinks it's to normal mm -hmm. because she, that's what she's used to that's why it's so important to have a good father in the a good and I and I keep saying good father people fathers who who are doing who are doing the, the right thing to the best of their ability in the household because nobody's perfect you know what was it you remember the father's name and father's name knows best that that program I don't remember his name either um, but nobody's him. Nobody's Cliff Huxtable. Ooh, Ward Cleaver. And then so Ward Cleaver was in uh, Leave It to Beaver. Leave It to Beaver. Because okay. Cleaver, Cleaver rounds with Beaver, which was really stupid. Uh, <laughs> and but, we're talking about character. So his name was Beaver Cleaver. <laughs> because the, the Huxtable seemed to have a, a, a wonderful home. You know, uh, Bill Cosby was a great actor. And and when I, I, and when I say uh, Cliff Huxtable, I'm talking about Cliff, Cliff Huxtable. I'm not, not talking Bill about Cosby. Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby is a, a regular human being. Um, Cliff Huxtable got to be, for the most part, perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, Cliff Huxtable got to get it right a lot. Cliff Huxtable was the one that they couldn't fool. They couldn't pull on anything over on. Cliff Huxtable is, is a guy who knew his family and his children inside and out and knew what they were going to do even before they did it and always had the right thing to say to them. Or, or or knew when to direct them to Claire. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, go talk to your mother. Um, and 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 we and that's a standard that we that none of us can live up to, because that's a standard that's fictional. Yes, it's a fairy tale. Um, so none of us can live up to that standard. So that's not the standard I'm talking about. When I say they're the best of your abilities, knowing what you know, because we all bring our childhood with us and what we saw. So sometimes you have to make conscious, fathers have to make conscious decisions about what they're going to include in their families and what they're going to exclude in their families. Um, and as you guys know, because we've already done the videos, that I grew up in, 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 in an abusive household, uh, an incredibly abusive household. And there's a lot of hatred um, that I purposed not to bring into my own home. Um, it just Thank wasn't. God. It just wasn't. It just wasn't going to happen. I just wasn't going to be that person. Um, and not that. And, and not that I dwelled on it because if you dwell on it, you usually end up doing it. But I just knew that that was a negative example, and I didn't. And I and, and I knew that at this point, I didn't want to live like that in that sort of tension-filled home I, anymore. I've never asked you. Do, did, how was your grandfather? What did your father grow up in? Did he see that going on in the household? I think it was, I don't know, to be honest, but I think that it was kind of the way that they carried themselves. They were, and it doesn't have anything to do from where you're from, but I think that sometimes in these communities, um, grew up in Hawkinsville, my, my father grew up in Hawkinsville, Georgia. Yeah, I know, where the hell is Hawkinsville, Georgia? Uh, I couldn't even tell you what part of Georgia it's in, uh, since, I think it's in South 
East Georgia somewhere. Some town that you'd zip through at 85 miles an hour and not even realize that you actually went through the town. Um, I think so. I think that that's kind of how they lived, especially when you talk about the 40s and the 30s. Uh, when, my dad, when my dad was young, I think that's kind of how they lived. I do. I think that's how they lived. And that's what they thought was okay. Now, and, and then when you exacerbate all that with alcohol abuse and drug abuse, then you get a really dangerous, volatile combination. Uh, so I think that, that's what, that that was his experience. I wasn't going to grow up, I wasn't going to have my son grow up under that sort of tension all the time and being afraid all the time. I just wasn't going to do it. So, And with Deb's help and, 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 and you know, with the help of the Word and the help of God, I've I've, I've, I've not in 30 years had, you know, what brought that into my marriage, brought that into my family. That's why I keep saying good fathers, doing what they're supposed to do to the best of your ability. And we talked about, and we talked about in our first video about dating, about people's responsibilities um, in, in, in the relationship. And one of the things we're going to talk about today is parenting. Now, we talked a little bit ago, we, we mentioned co-parenting. Um, and sometimes co-parenting is, is used in a term, hey, Tammy. Um, using the term when we're talking about parents who don't live together, mm -hmm. so they're, they they, they co-parent. The, the idea of co-parenting is a noble idea, but the fact of the matter is that co-parenting, the 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 perfect model for co-parenting is the children and the mother and father doing the right thing in the same house. That's a true co-parenting. That's what co-parenting is. Co-parenting is is making sure that the, the children are getting enough of both parents again at the same time and it's because that way they can see a clear picture of what it is supposed to be yes so often they don't see they don't see a clear picture or the whole picture of what things are supposed to be and that's why they go off the deep end that's why they go off sl sliding one way or the other because they never get to see the whole picture like Debbie was mentioning before when we're talking about hyper-emotionalism in young boys, is that they never see the calm, the steady uh, father figure who goes, wait a minute, son, let's just... Calm down. Let's just calm down and think about this for a second. Mm -hmm. Let's think about our options. As opposed to getting offended and upset. Um, and I saw that while, to, uh, while teaching so often. You see these boys that, that, that fly off the handle, and it, and it immediately comes a, resp a respect thing. You gonna respect me? And I said, you sound. Like, and and I, in my head, I go, you sound like a chick. <laughs> I know that's it. I know that's terrible to say. You sound like a chick. Nobody's nobody's disrespecting you, man. You just you just stepped out of line, and somebody told you. Mm -hmm. You gonna respect me? And you see, think about this. You see that in members of gangs, mm -hmm. they'll shoot somebody because, because they, they think see. that they've disrespected them. Mm -hmm. They're turf. We're not animals. That's what animals do. You know, it's so it's incredible. So they've not learned the self control that good fathers can teach kids and teach young boys. That you know what, you can't jump off at every single turn. You can't. And unfortunately, that's what happens with in in some instances with the police and these young men. They, you know, they need their fathers to teach them how not to get shot by a police officer. <laughs> how you not know, to get shot. That, and, and, you know, it's sad to say that, but in, we, in the world we live in, you have to learn how to respect authority in order that you don't get killed. Keep your mouth. It's not worth, you're right, but you're dead. How yeah. does that make sense? No, I mean, that's exactly right, but, and, and I think that good fathers can can teach their children that level of self-control. Not that mothers can't teach their kids self-control. Relax, y'all. But the idea is that good fathers can teach their, their kids self-control. Um, how to take an L. How to take a loss. Because mm -hmm. um, you're not going to win all the time. Because you're not going to win all the time. How to, how to, recover, how to recover from taking a loss. Um, because they see you sometimes take an L. And how are you going to react? How how are how are father how are how are men supposed to react to taking an L, um, which is why I like I am I am so thankful that we made a decision 
um, to have our son play high school football. I'm not saying that that's good for everybody, but it was good for, it was good for him and it was good for us. Um, because although he was in a very successful program, um, occasionally, I mean, and whenever they had to take an L, it was at the worst spot. It was the worst possible yeah, time. Usually, emotional in a championship in a, in a playoff or a championship. It was worse. It, 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 it was the worst time. But you learn how to take that L, and you learn how to get better. And you, you, you learn from what your mistakes were, and what everything that happened during that game. And you go back the next year, and you know that, and you you learn from it, and. And you do better. better. And you do better. And I think that because of how men think, yes, I, I am a proponent. Now, y'all can be mad at me. I am a proponent of men think differently and process things differently than women. They do. Okay. Mm -hmm. We do. We just we just think that we think differently and we, and we process things differently. And I'm not saying it's better or worse. I'm saying it's different. It is. It's, it's different. And in some cases, it's better. And in some cases, it's not so good. Um, because sometimes men don't get, don't do detail. Women do detail. Because sometimes they use, detail is not necessary. Well, because they do, because your brain, and there's been studies because they use, because they connect things in their brains across hemispheres, where men don't tend to do that. Men tend to compartmentalize. Men tend to look, tend to look at things as, as tasks and simple tasks that, that aren't necessarily related to anything else and aren't related to your and aren't related quite frankly to your feelings this is a task you like it you don't like it doesn't really matter you just friggin do it and and you're not you're, you're not upset about it or or, 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 or or whatever so men process things um, differently I mean I've been studies to prove it so this whole idea that everybody is that men and women are exactly the same, They're I'm afraid not. is and we can bull do crap. everything that men can do. We can't. I'm sorry. You can we want can. to. We and you know there's things that we are much better at that men aren't, and there are things that men are, are better. You know that it's it's both ways. Men, you know we're different, and God made it that way for a reason, and that's why He meant for there to be you know, marriage, you know, where you, one thinks the other way and the other thinks the, the, the and, and, and there are some males that think like women. I don't know if that's a screw up. I don't know if that's a, a, a you know, so a little joke that God threw in there or what, but Women and men think differently, but there are some men that, you know, think on the side of women, and there are some women that think on think like men. So, it's, we look, it, our bodies are so weird. Well, and, but, but the idea is that if the best situation is that your children get to See experience both, both. Mm -hmm. and then, because it's really difficult for, 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 for a mom who thinks like a mom, who thinks like a woman, to teach their young boy that this is not how dudes do it. This is not how guys do it. This is not how we think about things. Um, because that confuses a lot of young men. Um, so it's not the best. So it's not the best situation. It may be the situation you have, yes, but it's not the best situation. The best situation is that your kids get to see the whole picture. Especially when young men become older and they're teenagers, you know, and and they they try to go to their moms about situations and different things that are going on, and their mom tells them one way, but they're thinking and feeling a different way. So they need a male figure to come in and tell them, well, you're you're on the right track, man. You're you're doing okay. <laughs> you know, and, and and what mom said. Mm. <laughs> You know? Yeah, that's how she thinks, and that's good. That's how she thinks, and you respect, and you respect yes, that. You respect it, but but this is how this is how we do. Mm -hmm. This is how you know what, and that's really, and that's you know. So, so am I saying that the guys' club, the good old boys' club in your household, is an important club? Yes, I am saying exactly that. And we told you in video one that you wouldn't agree with everything that we, I mean that came out of my face. I don't expect you to, and that's okay. Um, but that's got to happen. Um, and mom and, and 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 I know. I mean, we went back. Uh, hey, Bree, <laughs> miss you, kid. Um, yes. Happy birthday, to Aiden, by the way. Uh, you know what? So the deal is that 
the best situation is for the dad to be there. And I'm, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm always, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back to when my son was three years old. My son was three years old, and he got his first gaming uh, console. Actually, I got my first gaming console. <laughs> yep, got it from McDuff's in Tampa Bay Center. Um, but it did something. It opened up something that he and I could do together, um, and that we did together for a long, long time. Um, and something that, that that my wife wasn't necessarily interested in, but he was interested in. My wife's done a great job because she happens to be a football fan or has learned to be a football fan because I am and so is my son. Yes, I learned football. So she, like she, so those are the things that are, I mean, and I, I'm just using those two things as an example. Um, it, could be, it could be anything. But those are the things that I can identify with my kid about and in that have conversation, um, bonding, um, show you know what share what i you know what how i think and how i think about things and i think those things have paid dividends to this day mm -hmm. i do i think that that uh our me and my son are the the lines of communications are, are 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 very much open to this day because of the groundwork we laid i think that that's really very very important very very important um fathers a good father in the home is it is 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 vital um, to the health of your children. Now, if it's not a situation, again, we want to go back and make sure because people are coming on coming on new. We're in no way shaming people who are in who are in whatever situation they're in because people are just doing. Everybody, I think everybody's they just do doing the best. Do. Everybody's just doing the best mm -hmm. they can uh, with the situations that they've been um, tossed into, uh, and a lot of people who who have tried to do it correctly, mm -hmm. and and for one reason or another it hasn't worked out. Um, but I think you have to have, the biggest thing, Deb, I think you have to have that example. Don't you have to have that example? You have to have an example of what you should do. And in saying that, not, not always, it, it doesn't always work out. That's the truth. <laughs> it is, you know, because we're people. And, and we're pe human. And people and are flawed. Yes. We make mistakes. And we do things that we shouldn't do. And, you know. We probably say this in our house at least once a day. People suck. Yeah. <laughs> people suck. In general. Uh, people people will, will will make horrible decisions for themselves and other people. Uh, so people suck. So sometimes you you get that. But to the best of your ability, if, if you can create as many positive role models for your children, you're doing the best thing you can for your kids. I think. Um, you know, I didn't have the I didn't have the best role model. I had one of the worst role models. Not, now, now the benefit is, now if I can say if there's a benefit to any of that is that I knew exactly what not to do. There wasn't any, there wasn't any muddled ground. I know exactly what not to do. And if I, if I knew that if I had stayed 180 degrees separate from that, I would be headed in the right direction because that was obviously the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. um, so in that case, it made it easy or made it easier. Um, but finding out what the right thing to do was always kind of a, I don't know. And, but, and so guys... Remember, as you move on in your marriages and you move on with your families, you're gonna you're gonna step in it from time to time. You are going to step in it from time to time. You are, and there isn't any. And I wish I could t I, I could sit you down and tell you that you're not going to. That if you read this book, you're gonna be perfect. If you you know what, if you memorize the Bible backwards and forward, you're never gonna make a mistake. You're never gonna say the wrong thing. You're never gonna do the wrong thing. But the fact of the matter is that you are. You are. Now, what do you do now? You, when you screw up, you, you recover. You repent and, and you go the other direction and you do the best you can. Um, but having fathers in the house, having a good father in the house, is, hey, Ter, is extremely important to the, um, I mean, vital to the upbringing of your kids. Um, so, dads, I will probably do, at some point, I think I'm going to do. A guy's talk. Just yes. a guy's talk. Just yes. just talk to y'all. Just men. Just talk to y'all. Talk to the dudes. Yeah, just talk to the dudes. Because we've got concerns that, um, not that we don't want to share with our wives or significant others. Uh, yeah, I see. Um, but things that we, that we really want to make sure that people get. Because it's really, really extremely important 
that people get the whole picture. All right, listen, we got to get out of here and make room for somebody else. So until we see you again, go out there and learn something. Love somebody. Remember to say. like us, look on YouTube and get um, and get some Go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, <laughs> like, like, and click the notification bell. Uh, oh, no, I just lost it. I know. Just, I timed you, up. You, you timed <laughs> up. Wait. <laughs> oh, we're back. <laughs> so go to our YouTube channel and like and subscribe and click the notification bell so you guys see the videos when they post. Um, normally, the videos will post shortly after we do them here live on Facebook. Uh, we appreciate you coming. We appreciate you being here. We, we appreciate you supporting us. Now, here's the deal. I'm in the milestones. We have 32 subscribers on, on, on YouTube. 32. My goal this week is to get to 50. That's 18 people. That's not a lot of people. That's 18. We should be able to do that. Please go to YouTube. Go to YouTube, subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to our channel. It doesn't cost you any money. No. And you, if you've never been on YouTube. And Mark Zuckerberg already, already knows. Already knows where you are. So Try YouTube. YouTube is very interesting. I mean, uh, like I say a lot of times, we watch more YouTube now than we do regular television. That is the tr and that is true. So, and it's, you, you can filter things better. You can watch what you like. You can uh, do all kinds of things, and and yeah, you you so go to you so go to YouTube and watch our channel. Uh, put it in your th in your what in your things that you normally do. Uh, we need eighteen subscribers to get to fifty, and then yes, I'll be I'll be hitting you up to get to seventy five, and then and then a hundred, and then a thousand, and a million. Yes, um, but first things first, fifty. So go to our YouTube channel. Again, we got to get out of here and make room for somebody else. Do we see you yes. again? Go out there and learn, learn love somebody, learn something. Week. And um, take care of yourself. We mean it. Love you. Bye for now. Bye. Looks, looks like I'm going to.